If you are watching the Palaha Shatakwa today, this is a test of patience. Um, wow. Hi, Anne. Hello, 61 Moose One. Hello, everybody. My goodness, we are experiencing in the flesh what it means to have patience. Um, I appreciate your patience with me as I've been trying to go live. This is the fourth time um, at about the three, four, five minute mark it goes down. So I'm not going to play any music. I'm going to just jump right in. Neil says I'm sticking by no matter what. I appreciate you, Neil. Thank you, sir. Um, okay, so I'm not going to play music because maybe there's a uh, an issue with... Um, Maybe Instagram is shutting it down because of uh, rights. So we'll, we'll do, we're going to disregard that. And um, I'm going to go straight into what I want to talk about today. Because I'd rather give a little bit than, than nothing else. Um, so I really appreciate you guys. One of the things I said when I was in NYU, I used to do these um, off-Broadway shows. And an off-Broadway house is a minimum, or a maximum, I think, of like 88 or 100 people. And the fact that um, there's about 130 people who are sticking with me, uh, just sticking with me right now. This is awesome. This is like a huge, this is a nice big audience. So I'm, I'm grateful that you guys have patience with me and with uh, our technology. And I want to get on with it. So we're going to talk about patience today um, in the Palaha Chautauqua. So uh, yeah, we're back. Um, yes. Um, okay. So let's do it. Let's talk about it while we got each other. Um, what is patience? How does it manifest ourselves in life? What does it feel like? Because we all know what it feels like to be impatient. It's a tangible feeling. You start to get, you know, like revved up inside and you can burn and start to vibrate literally. Like right now when, when we just dropped off, I was like, what's happening? Like you can get impatient. And what does that look like? What does it feel like? to be actually patient. There has to be some kind of manifestation, a physical manifestation of that. And can we grow patience in our lives? So I wanna discuss with you today how I think that patience is like a tool that we can use. So imagine, if you will, that we have all these uh, emotional tools that we get to use. And um, let's say uh, 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 having kindness is one of them and having um, integrity is another one of them, and having bravery or courage is another one. Um, being able to be polite and kind, that's another one. Patience is like a samurai sword. I want you to imagine a sword or pruning shears, or if you're an artist, a different size paintbrush. So we, as we, we have all these different tools in our tool belt that we get to use to move through the day and to move through the world, right? So patience, let's just, for the sake of this thing, is a samurai sword. Now, let's assume that the world will have us believe that patience is really just about waiting. Like, if you have patience, it says that patience is a virtue. And so let's just assume that, that by the world standards, patient just means, hey, sit down, be quiet, wait your turn, have patience, right? Um, and I would like to argue that patience is not passive, but it's actually a choice that you can make and that it means something, it's an active choice. So that when you choose to be patient, you're actually making a choice to be patient. Um, so I wanted to read something from you guys. The first thing is Dr. Seuss. So this is what patience is in the world, right? You can get so confused that you'll start in a race, down long, wiggled roads at a breaknecking pace, and grind on for miles across weirdish, wild space, headed, I fear, towards a most useless place, the waiting place. People just waiting, waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or the mail to come, or the rain to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow, or waiting around for a yes or no, or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting. Waiting for the fish to bite or waiting for wind to fly a kite or waiting around for Friday night or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake or a pot to boil or a better break. 
or a string of pearls or a pair of pants or a wig with curls or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. Anyway, the idea that waiting is this uh, sort of, you don't want to be in the waiting place, right? And so patience usually implies that we're having to wait for people who are behaving badly or we're having to wait on circumstances that are not good. Patience is defined by Webster's Dictionary as bearing pains or trials calmly without complaint. Manifesting forbearance. Forbearance is refraining from the enforcement of something, like you get a forbearance on a loan, uh, under provocation or restraint, to not be hasty, steadfast despite opposition, difficulty or adversity, able to bear. So the synonyms of patience, forbearance, long-suffering, tolerance, tolerance. So I, I feel like when we think about patience from a worldly point of view, it's a very oppressive kind of concept, you know? Like, oh, I need to have patience. And it's a virtue we're told as little kids, well, hey, you need to have patience, patience, patience. And so it sounds like a, a thing that's a little more of a burden than a gift. But I, again, I'm gonna argue that it's like a samurai sword. And as we are trying to figure out what it means to have the full expression of the human experience. How do we kingdom live? How do we become ninjas of patience or to stay with the samurai concept, samurais of patience? How do we then utilize patience as a gift and make it an active thing in our lives? Um, it's a daily practice. So this week, as I was thinking about what I was gonna to say to you guys for patience, I, um, I had a lot of different circumstances, literally in one week, where, and tonight was a great example of just things not going according to plan. And how do you kind of breathe through that? I mean, it's just interesting. Started it, had a cool little introduction, had a lot of fun, I was in a great mood, was showing you the little thing I make. By the way, if this does not uh, bail, I'm gonna give these away at the end. Every week I'm gonna do a little fancy one of these. And then if you entered the art contest, you can get one of these for me as my way of saying thank you. Um, they're written backwards <laughs> so that it reads. But um, I was in a great mood and then all of a sudden it goes dead. And then I start again and it goes dead. And then I go start again and it goes dead. So now I'm, we're sitting here and my fingers are crossed and I'm being patient. But at the same time, that feeling of not getting what I wanted, it riles you up inside. And when your kids aren't doing the work, the schoolwork that you need them to do, how that feels inside. Because you start to get frustrated because you have to like, you want something and it's not happening. You become impatient. Um, how about people at work? I and mean, when it's just not flowing the way that you think it should be flowing. And you start to get impatient with people. So if that's what impatient feels like, then if we are going to become samurais of patience, how does it feel to be patient? Um, and I wanted to talk to you guys. I just want to tell you a couple stories, and then I want to go live with y'all and hear stories about um, what it means when your patience is tested or examples of when you learn to be patient in life, because I think we all have those moments where you're like, hmm, that's what patience feels like. Because I will say this, in the moment when I'm getting frustrated, like for example, I literally was losing my, my cool a second ago, and I just turned my phone off, and I said a little prayer, and I was like, Lord, if you want me to have this thing tonight, and you want it to roll out, then it'll work. And I feel like to actively pursue Patience means that you are going to be tolerant and you are going to be long suffering. You are going to be um, good at waiting, but you're also going to have endurance. And athletes have endurance, competitors have endurance. Um, anybody who does something for a long, long time and sustains a level of excellence while doing that thing has endurance. And you're also going to have humility because you're not the first. So that whole idea of the first shall be last and the last shall be first comes in beautifully to play. Um, two separate uses for the sword of patience. One is the use for each other and the other is the use for things. So as we're learning what patience is, to be active with patience, using patience is different for people 
than it is for circumstances. So with people, you're going to be patient in one way, and you're going to use that sword one way. And then with things and circumstances, you're going to have to use patience another way. So I had this, um, I had this great story that I want to share with you guys. I was in high school. And I had a really amazing, brilliant teacher named Peter Feroy, and he taught English and poetry. And he was one of those guys who, he's one of those teachers that enters into your life and opens the door of things um, for you in a way. And, and you see learning, and you see, um, I don't know, for me it was literature, and it was, the, uh, it was just a, the idea of poetry, all of it. Like, I, I got into poetry and writing for nature, and he was a part of this program that did kind of like outward bound programs for school. And we would go camping, a bunch of students would go camping in Big Sur, California. Um, and we would write like nature stories. And one of the things that he talked about, one of the stories that he told about waiting and about patience and endurance was about this crab underwater. So imagine if you will, there's a little crab and he's making his way to this rock on the sea floor. And he all of a sudden hits this, this conflict, this thing that he can't, climb up, right? He's stuck. So the crab, you know, it's a seafloor, right? So it's big. And this crab, he can't see around it. So he just sits there and he waits. But he eats. And he's building. And he's like getting stronger. He's getting bigger. And soon you know it, his shell grows and he's able to just go and then the crab moves on. The patience, the idea of just sitting in the season that you're at and the season that you're in and being fully immersed in that and being patient with the life that you have right now, that's what I'm talking about. Um, because everybody has struggles. We wait for cancer. People have cancer and they have to be patient as they fight it. They're not passively waiting. They're not just sitting there hoping they're, they're doing something, they're waiting, but it's a season in their life that they have to get through, hopefully. Um, unemployment. How many people have been unemployed this year and it's a real struggle and it's a real season and you either can get yourself into this fret where it's a spiral of depression and anxiety and worry and fear or you can just take a deep breath and use that sort of patience to be like okay this isn't the entirety of my life there's got to be something else and i don't know if it's going to be this week or next week or a month from now or a year from now but eventually the season that i'm in it will change. If I'm just patient, I can get through it. And so it's hope, and it's encouragement, and it's endurance. Um, divorce, man. People going through divorce. You have to have patience with yourself, with each other. Mental health issues, you've got to have patience with your circumstances, with the confusion, with the pain. Um, and we go through these things, and even though the season might be a decade or a lifetime, having patience with yourself, grief, loss, COVID-19, all these things require patience. Um, so patience becomes a virtue, not because it's, it's a thing that we're told as little kids that we should have, but because it's actually the sword that empowers us. Um, I want to share one more story with you. I don't know where it is in the Bible. One of you can find it. But in the old book, I'm going to start referring to Jesus as my friend. So my friend directed me to this, this quote in the Bible, and it was about, and Jesus says, when you enter a party, don't seat yourself at the head of the table so that when the host shows up, you get moved for someone more important than you. Find the worst seat in the house. Go sit there so that when the host shows up and sees where you're sitting, he says, no, no, no. And he pulls you up, and then you're honored. So this idea of, of entitlement that we walk around with, or this idea of expectations that we have for things, often that is what leads to our impatience. The idea that this isn't working out the way that I wanted it, what I wanted, so how do I make that work, right? Um, so I wanted to read a few little things, and then I want to go live with y'all, because I'm so curious about your, I want to learn from y'all what you think patience is, when you've had patience expressed in your life or experienced in your life, when you also may be impatient. Um, so hot tempers cause arguments, but patience brings peace. It's Proverbs 15, 18. So hot tempers cause arguments, 
but patience brings peace. So that's just a really practical, you know? If you're impatient, you're gonna get in fights in the grocery line when someone's not doing the thing you think you need them to do. And you're gonna you're gonna lose your cool a little bit. When you're driving, so somebody said, Yeah, when I drive, it's that thing where you're like, Come on, you SOB, why'd you cut me off? Like that's the impatience. And that's where you start practicing. Something else was interesting. When I was talking about patience, people were like, Man, I hate asking for patience, or I don't want to pray for patience because all of a sudden God puts things in my life where I'm tested and I've got all these obstacles that I have to deal with. And it reminded me of when I used to pray for, um, I used to pray that, that um, it was such, I don't know, <laughs> I was a little kid and I would pray to be respected by my peers in elementary school, but also to respect them. It was like this idea of respect. And often in, when I would pray that prayer, then something would happen where somebody would do something that was very disrespectful or rude or mean. And it was almost like God would put these stumbling blocks in my life so that then I would have to build up that strength. So I do think that when you pray for patience or when you start thinking about being patient, you're going to start finding a lot of opportunities where your patience is tested. But it's also kind of like when you want to buy a mattress. You don't notice how many mattress commercials are on TV until you're looking or a car that you buy. And all of a sudden you're like, wow, everybody drives a Suburban? But no, you're just now aware of it. Um, love is patient. Love is kind, right? So when we get to love, this is a tool that anybody can use the samurai sort of patience. This one is interesting. The end of something is better than its beginning. So think about that. The end of something is better than its beginning. Patience is better than pride. That's Ecclesiastes 7, 8. So that's literally turning the entire narrative upside down and saying that the end of it is better than the beginning of it. Because what we always think is like, ah, oh, first love, that's the one that feels good. Or, ooh, this new experience, this is awesome. Or new this, new that, new car, new nah. But the end of it, after all of the wear and tear, after all of the story, like that's the juice, that's the real, that should be the goal. And that patience is better than pride, which means to me that patience is humility. And I keep seeing people uh, writing humility as it goes up. Um, all right, I'll keep these up while I go. But I'm going to see what you guys have to say. I've got some people in the queue. All right, Ali, I'm coming to you right now. If you're out there, if my phone will let me. Wow. Guys, I'm not sure what's happening today. But it is definitely a test of patience. So now it's not letting me um, connect with anybody. I love that Mimsy Boys 3, you don't want me live on this subject. Well, let's do it this way. Um, I'll try again, but let's try it where you guys can talk. Yeah, it's not letting me go live. But this is so interesting. All right, well, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer, Romans 12, 12. So rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation. So the idea of just hanging tight, right? And holding on, um, that's important. And then here's this other one, in Psalms 41, 41. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to, he, uh, he inclined to me and heard my cry. So what that tells me, and it says good things come to those who wait, right? We all remember the Heinz commercial where they like had the slow bottle and it didn't pour and they just, you know, you just watch it and they said, good things come to those who wait. And it's funny because Heinz changed their bottle so you go, you not have to wait for ketchup anymore. But in this, it's saying, hang tight because there is gonna be a reward for you. Yeah. You know, um, again, Proverbs fourteen twenty nine. Slow to anger, great understanding, but he who has a tasty a hasty temper exalts folly. So I think we are called as uh, I think I think anybody who wants to be a fully developed human being, regardless of your uh, your faith, 
there should be this expression of patience, right? Pull out that sort of patience and start practicing. Like, how do I not lose my temper? How do I not lose my cool? I wonder what the world would have looked like if people were more patient this summer and as people are going into this election process. Um, because we have to be patient with everybody, right? Um, with, a, with God, a day is like 1,000 years, and 1,000 years is like a day. So what that means to me is that, uh, is that we've got all the time in the world if we're leaning on his schedule, but not ours. So the minute you let go of your agenda, the minute you let go of the desires you have and the wants you have and the things that you want out of it, you're going to start feeling a little better. Be strong and do not give up. Your work will be rewarded. That's 2 Chronicles 15, 7. Believe, have faith, endurance, perseverance. Be completely humble, gentle, be patient, bearing one another in love. Ephesians 4, 2. Again, humility and kindness. Um, let's try to go live one more time. Let's see what's happening. Okay. Let's see, did it work? <laughs> hey, it worked! Hey! Hi, Gail. <laughs> I <didn't remember> it. <laughs> Hi, Chris. It's nice to see you today. Oh, it's so good to see you, too. Have you been watching from the beginning of the first one? I watched every attempt. I mean, really crazy, right? <laughs> like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a living example of what it means to have patience and what it means to enjoy. It is. And to be humble, it to be like, you know what, this isn't what I planned, but let's see how it goes. That's right. Um, <laughs> you always have really wonderful things to contribute. What are your thoughts on patience? Um, well, actually, a lot of what you've already said, um, it's very interesting. Um, patience is part of a process. Um, if you look in Romans 5, chapters, uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, it says that suffering produces endurance. Well, that in word endurance is the same word as patience and perseverance. In the Greek, it's all the same word. And so suffering produces endurance or patience, and then patience produces character, and then character produces hope. And so it's part of the process, right? Yeah. to be a human. Yes. And I think that's really important because sometimes you were talking about how the world, um, it, it can be a very oppressive thing from the world's perspective. Like you're just supposed to have it. And so if you don't, you feel kind of less than, right? Right, right. But that's not the way it is. It's a process. And so we all have to learn. And for me personally, uh, I'm not a patient person. <laughs> right. I really am not. But that's why I go to God's word, because um, it's full of examples of people who struggled with things and, and had to be patient. Right. 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 Look at Job. Look at David. Look at the prophets. I mean, it's just one after the other. Look at Jesus. Yeah. Man, was he ever patient? <laughs> Thirty years of just hanging out, being like, "All right, well, when are we starting?" Right. Yeah. Right. And then exactly. everybody he and dealt then, with, being like, eh. "Right." <laughs> He's like, "No, guys." <laughs> and you know, it, and then and then just God the Father. You know, He's so patient with us. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing in in Second Peter, um. He's, it talks about how the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And so when I think about, when I find myself getting impatient, I have to tell myself, Gail, think about how patient God has been with you. Right. Right. right? And how grateful I am for his patience. Yeah. Um. So, you know, that helps to kind of put things in perspective. But I do think that patience is linked with trust, right? Yeah. I trust in God. And so I know that he is the source of patience. He has patience with me. So, yeah. anyway, that's what I've been thinking about. Well, and it's interesting because you said something about how, and I do think the world has flipped having patience. Like, it's turned it on its head a little bit where waiting – is not a good thing where it's almost like it's a right. it's a bad thing because it makes you weak or it makes you like well you're not going after the thing that you should be going after right. and wanting 
But what I'm saying and what I'm trying to make the argument for today is that there's actually strength in having patience. It's the guy who can sit back in the corner and just wait. And there's something that like this idea of sitting in a season. Um, yeah. You know, when my little kids were babies, you had, there were diapers to change. And I was, I was the kind of daddy who, I had a lot of diaper. I, I took diaper duty pretty seriously. And I, like, I was like, I can do that. That's one thing. Good you're, for you. you're feeding them out of your own body. <laughs> I can at least like, like clean up the mess. And I remember there were moments where it was not a fun gig. Like that was not what, what a, you know, a Hollywood actor wanted to be doing. Like, like literally, I was like, this is not, this isn't what it should be. But it was a season of my life. Yeah. And in it, there was a call for endurance and a call for patience mm -hmm. and a call for humility. And then mm -hmm. before I knew it, the boys grew out of diapers and that season was over. Yeah. And the bond that happened between us and the connective tissues that happened because I was the daddy who cleaned diapers and because I had that mm -hmm. familiarity and that experience, it, it, it deepened the bond that I have with my kids. I mean, I'm grateful for that experience, right? Yeah, absolutely. Think, and if you're an impatient person and you're somebody who's cutting, so almost like, that gave me a step up versus if I was impatient and was like, you know what, I, I don't like this. I'm not going to do it. Or I'm going to move on to the next thing. Or I'm going to find my comfort zone. So I think it's about being uncomfortable for a while. It certainly can be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, let me see if I can pull on some other people. Today has truly been a test of my patience on Instagram, but you're always uh, a blessing to this Chautauqua and I appreciate you being here today, Gail. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Bye brother. Bye-bye, sister. See you soon. Okay. Okay. Now, it's. I think we're on it. I think we've got a show. So let's see who else we've got. Um, I'm going to send a request to... Yeah, so I'm being comfortable with uncomfortable. Hi, Allie. Hi. Hey, you got football in the background. Oh, yeah, I who's, do. I who's do. playing right now? Is it... Um, is it it looks like Brady? Chicago and the Saints, the Bears okay. and Saints. Okay. Yeah. Um, you have to have a lot of patience because you have a million kids. Beyond a yeah. lot of patience, yeah. Okay, so but tell yes. me, Ellie, how do you, um, how do you express, like, how does patience manifest itself in your life? What words do you have for other, your, your fellowship? You know, I, I have a three-year-old and that has been, the two and a half to three has been my biggest test of patience that I feel like I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> so, but looking at things from his perspective, like just changing my perspective on this, he's still brand new to the world and figuring things out, looking at it through someone else's eyes has kind of helped me sometimes take a deep breath and say, okay, we're gonna work on this together and we're gonna get through it. And uh, yeah. That's interesting. I like that looking, looking through someone else's eyes. And so if you extend that, to be on your kid, which is an easy leap. Right. Thing. Even like your example of driving, I feel like yeah, I like, find myself now, like maybe they're in a hurry because there's an emergency in their right. life and I can't. Yeah. yeah. So it's, an, it's like an immediate extension of grace to the other yeah. person. That's total stranger being like, you know what? I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And maybe something is crazy and I'm going yeah. to. Trying gonna to see the, the good in all people instead of just thinking everything's bad. <laughs> you know what you just reminded me of? Um, did you ever see Schindler's List? Yes. Okay. Long yeah, long time ago. Do you remember the scene Ray Fiennes, uh, Oscar Schindler is like, uh, forgiveness is more powerful than punishment. Yes. And Ray Fiennes was in the uh, mirror and he's like, I forgive you. And he was practicing how he was going to like. All the time. Yeah, yeah. he was going to extend grace to people. I remember yeah. that, that scene so vividly because it was like, huh, how do you, instead of losing your, your cool, how yeah. do you hold on to it and just sort of be the person who's patient and be the person right. who can, yeah. And it's really hard. <laughs> it can be hard sometimes, yeah. But, uh, and yeah, so the three-year-olds have tested me, but I think it's also helped me have a lot of patience outside of just my kids and put it into the world because changing my perspective on like how they're feeling kind of helped me find my patience with other people could be going through crazy times too. That's great. Yeah. So would you say that like, almost like if you were practicing yoga, exercising patience, you're growing in patience and you're Correct. seeing it have, yeah. So you're like learning how to do it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Allie, thank you. Thank you. Great to see you again. You.
All right. Enjoy the weekend. Bye. Have fun watching Bye. football. Bye. Oh. <laughs> My kid's so jealous. He's like, football. We're in Canada. <laughs> There's no football to be watched. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thanks, Allie. Um, oh, that reminded me of a story. And then I just forgot my story. All right. Um, okay. Seb, I'm coming to you. Let's see. Hello. Hi, Seb. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah, you've been going through it, right? Yes. Well, <laughs> um, so you have to have a lot of patience. Um, how do you, like, how, how does patience manifest itself in your life? I feel like I've found patience as a consequence of other things. Um, so you were saying like patience is a choice and I do feel like a lot of times I feel myself going the old direction of the negative and I go, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. Think of this, think of that, you know, and, and the patience comes in there. But I think at first it was, it's been a process of probably since the end of July and obviously turn into Jesus and the Bible and reading and and finding that kind of comfort and peace in that and then being able to forgive myself and then forgive other people and then because I'm able to forgive now you find peace and then through peace you're also able to be calmer and when you're a calmer person you're able to be more patient yeah. so that's why I feel like my patience has been a consequence of all that kind of journey that I've kind of gone on since the end of July. Love that. I love that. I love that you're taking it seriously and applying the things that we're talking about to your life and I love this. That, I love that it's a. I love that it's paying off for you because that's encouragement. It really is. Yeah. It feels very medicinal, um, very kind of therapeutic, and and things. Um, because my therapy, like my actual therapy, um, my first appointment got cancelled, and yeah, then no. it was the, then the appointment was the following week. Then my therapist called me the next week to say she was leaving. So my therapy just stopped dead after opening up, which was extremely hard. Sure. Um, and then I got a phone call on Friday to say that, um, like, arranged my appointment with my new therapist, who sounds really lovely. Um, and then on Saturday, yesterday, it got announced that we're going into a second lockdown nationwide. So <laughs> it's like, what? even like am I supposed to do therapy or am I supposed to be here with you learning the medicine myself and applying it and 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 thing and it's just like wow okay well and maybe both and also maybe you know because of the lockdown because of the nature of this year um it's been such an introspective year for you because of quarantine yes because of the self-isolation and because of keeping yeah in I mean just the very nature of like a lot of navel gazing, right? And I think we've all been yeah. through this very similar. Um, and there's people who, yeah. are, who are thriving in it, and there's people who are really becoming undone by it. And what I'm proud of yeah. you for is that you have tackled uh, and mental, like the stuff that happens inside the the, 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 the brain, the dome of the head, mm -hmm. and the noise and the voices and all of that conflict when there's no peace inside and it's just constant, like, that's, that's almost, I mean, that's worse than, I mean, that's like, that's, that's, it's worse than anything else, I think, because, I mean, it equals any kind of physical ailment, but physical ailment it's, can sort of yeah. like start to learn. And it's like constant as well. And it's like yeah. so exhausting. And oftentimes, you know, like, some days you have the energy to not believe the negativity, but then other days you're buying into the negativity because you just can't fight it. So, like, it's, yeah, it's hard. Yeah. And I, I feel like I, I definitely have my seasons with it, and I'm starting to accept that I might always have those seasons, but if I can 
learn how to kind of shine the light on the dark moments and see the truth of them rather than buying into the the lies of the negativity or whatever like i'm able to to manage it a little better but my the impact that trauma has had on my brain makes me now kind of think in a very black and white sort of way and that might not change so it's like looking for the gray areas as well and i think that patience kind of helps with that because instead it's not just like that person just said something rude or that person just did something mean or or whatever it's well where did that come from like why is that person feeling like they need to do that thing what like why weren't they kinder in that moment did they have something going on and like patients um can like sort of help me to not see things like so black and white and like help me sort of take the time and look for the gray areas and understand things a bit better as well. That's really beautiful, Sam. That's powerful. You know, you said something and it made me think of, um, you said oh, patience almost allows you to take a step back and almost yeah. see the rhythm, like to, to be able to self, like to look at the rhythm that happens and to be able to start becoming aware of a rhythm and say, okay, well, this yeah. is and I'm going to come into here now. And, but now we're coming back and we're good again. Oh no, mm. here it comes again. And so to be able to like understand yourself almost in a way. Yeah. Like, patience with yourself. And when I was when I was writing, like I've been thinking a lot this week about patience and like my thoughts kind of materialized themselves into a poem um, sort of at some point during the week. But when I was thinking about patience, even just saying the word, because it's a long word and it takes a long time to say, it sort of it slows like even like I'll say um, I do like mantras and um, one of them is blessings not curses yeah. so like you, you're trying to like think kind things not mean things especially about myself um but if I say patience like it's just like it slows my actual brain activity down because usually if you get like frustrated your your brain kind of speeds up and it's a lot noisy and and things but yeah, just it's saying to myself, patience, it like slows it down, yeah. It's interesting. And you said that it was like patience. It's almost like patience. Like shushing. I don't know if it's just my accent. Like yeah. maybe other people can say it quicker, but no, um, it's really yeah. Like, it's like almost like a shh. Sh- sh- yeah. Calm yourself down. And I do shush my mind a lot as well. Sweet. In a nice way, like, but no, yeah, I yeah. find that calming as well. Um, yeah. So thank you for your your honesty when you come on to the to the Chautauqua with me and and for everybody. Yeah, who, it's my pleasure. Um, I know that what you talk about is really brave stuff and it's very vulnerable and it's very personal. Um, but I know that hearing it has helped a lot of people, and so I appreciate you and I applaud you for that. And I think thank you. I encourage you to just keep it up, like keep up the work. Yeah. Thanks very much, Chris. Sharpen your sword. I'm always paper. grateful for you. Cut through all the sword yeah. of patience. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. Can you uh, wield the sword of patience whilst wearing boxing gloves, though? Yeah. Well, yeah. You can <laughs> one glove on, one hand on sword, and we'll start to. <laughs> it works. <laughs> all right. Uh, um, have a great week. We'll keep in touch. And with you too, Chris. And we'll talk soon. Okay. Yes. Right. Definitely. Bye. Speak to you. Bye. There we go. Um. All right, let's see. Felicia. <clears throat> Hi, yeah. Felicia, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. My name is Chris. Have we met before? I don't think we have yet. No, I just started watching um, a few weeks ago because I saw one of your Easter ones that you did, and I just loved how you shared about your faith, and I'm like, I want to start tuning in. So thank you for being <laughs> about your relationship with Jesus. That's awesome. Well, thank you for watching. I, I mean, you know, I think I think the world has gotten to a point where we just, we ought to start talking about what it is that gets us through the world. And I think Hollywood has always been very protective about keeping its actors and their faith, you know, very separate. And, but after the quarantine happened this year and all the hurt and all the struggle and all the pain that I was seeing, 
it's almost inseparable. You know what I mean? And I don't think it can distract. I don't think one takes away from the other. So thank you for, um, I'm glad that you're tuning in. Um, yeah. Do you have anything, do you have any perspective on patients that you want to share with people? Yeah, so um, I'm actually 34 years old and I've been single all my life. So right now I'm in a season of waiting and trying to be patient. Um, it's difficult. And now with like being in quarantine, it makes dating even more difficult because you can't be around anybody really. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, it's been difficult trying to wait on the Lord, you know, and there's times where I've gotten patient and try to take things into my own hands. But that only led to heartache and, you know, depression and anxiety. So I'm kind of at that point right now where I um, am just trusting in the Lord. And I think some people were saying about being proactive. And so um, as I wait, I'm trying to prepare myself to be that godly wife um, to my future husband. So I try praying for my future husband. I read books on how to be a godly um, <laughs> wife. I take classes. So I just want to make sure I set myself up to have a healthier relationship with my spouse. All right, fellas, if you're out there, you're a good Christian man. <laughs> you're single. Um, I think that's really awesome. I think that's exactly, that's exact. you're living exactly what I'm talking about, which is being in a season and finding ways to actively push through that season while also sitting in it and just saying, okay, well, this is what it is right now. And it won't always be that. Um, how did you feel the difference? Like explain how you felt the difference between the anxiety when you were trying to, to, to do it all yourself versus the moment you just kind of released it and said, Hey, listen, whatever it is, is what will be, will be. Um, well, I invested in the wrong person, and I realized when that happened um, that when I wasn't doing things God's way, because he wasn't living his life for the Lord, and so that's where the anxiety came, and so after that, I'm like, I don't want to put myself through that anymore, so I'm just going to wait for God's plan um, and, and, and spare that um, from happening to me again, and so I see lots of girls just going back to the same patterns and you know, going in relationships that aren't healthy. And I'm like, how can you do that? Like, why would you want to do that? I'd rather just be by myself and just wait than be depressed or anxious again. Yeah, I love that. You know, we're called, there's a moment, like you're in a very precious moment in your life. And it probably feels like, as you said, you were 34, right? You said you're 34. So it yeah. probably feels like you're like, oh my gosh, it's been so long or it's been, I, I'm ready or I'm whatever that is, but there's something, there's a calling to singleness um, that gives you an openness to the whole world where the minute you're in relationship, you're cut off from so many things and so many people because you're in relationship and your priorities focus change, completely shift. Um, and so there is this, uh, there is, there are, there are perks to both things is my point. And it's what you're doing, what I love is saying, okay, well, here I am right now in this season of my life. How do I then fully investigate and, and explore and live in that human experience of being a single woman who's, you know what I mean? Looking for somebody, but like also content with who I am and where I am. So I think that's really awesome. I think that's really, I, I encourage you to continue forward. And um, yeah, thank you for sharing your story with us. Can I share a Bible verse really quick? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So this is kind of what's encouraging me when I kind of lose hope. So Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So I know there's hope for me um, in this time of, of singleness, and I um, accept that over my life that God has a wonderful um, spouse out there for me. Well, I bet He does. I pray that He does. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for coming on today. Yeah, thank you for having me. So nice yeah. to talk to you. Yeah, welcome to the Palaha Shitaka community. I'm so glad that you're here. I look yeah, forward to talking you. to you again. We'll keep in touch. Yes, you too. Have a great okay. day. You too. Bye. Bye. Oh, what a great heart. I love that. So sweet. Um, okay, dudes. What else? Who else? What do we got? Um, 
Let's see how Sarah's doing. <clears throat> Sarah has patiently waited to talk. Hello, Sarah. Hello. You are patient and tell us why. Um, you know, looking at a calling, um, when I went to Burkina Faso that first time and, you know, almost died and got sick and, um, you know, hear people being like, what you want to help people wear and do what? And, um, it just really, um, once I finally accepted like, okay, this is my calling. This is what I'm going to do. I wasn't patient <laughs> up to get to that point. Like, like I felt the calling, but it's like, okay, I'm called to do this, but like, I have no resources. I have no tools. I'm being sick. I'm like, there's just like all these obstacles in the way. And so it's like, but how do I do this? And once I finally got to a place and it was a bunch of things that happened or came together to where I was just like, you know what? I just got to sit back. Like it's going to happen how it needs to happen. And if I'm trying to force it, it's not gonna. And so just taking that step back to have some faith and be like, okay, this is what I'm called to do. I know it. And it's going to happen as it needs to happen. Right. Doesn't mean I don't have to do my part to be active and try and help things along. But, right. um, you know, it was just really trying to, yeah, find that patience was um, difficult. But then once it's there, there's so many things of like, okay, this is cool. Like, like when you said the, the, it ends better than it begins or something right. like that. Right. Um, I was like, yeah, cause there's so many things now where I'm like, Oh, that's, that's kind of rough. And then it's like, Oh, but wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Once right. it gets to that point, it's going to be really cool. So I just need to get better. to that yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. So much better. Yeah. I love what you just said because it reminded me of the good things that we like sometimes like we've been talking a lot about in, like long suffering and enduring things that are negative, but there's also patience and things that are really exciting. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I was 22 and right out of college, I wanted my career to explode. And, and I had mm -hmm. a, I wrote this, this <laughs> every January 1st, I write a list of like one year goals, five year goals, 10 year goals. And my goal was to be a national figure. This is so arrogant. I apologize. But I was like to be a national figure by 2003. And this was 1999. So I'd given myself this five year goal. And I was so impatient to get to where I wanted to be or where I thought I needed to be mm -hmm. uh, that I, I was, I fired people that I probably shouldn't have fired early on. I didn't take jobs that I might have should have taken had I just sat back in the pocket a little bit and been like, you got this. So it's interesting because that's a, mm -hmm. you took a positive thing and were impatient about how far you wanted to go. And it is interesting when God slows you down with things mm -hmm. you don't expect, like getting sick or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like financial things where you're like, cause I'm in a, yeah, we, we we're in a season right now where everything is yep. um, limited as far as like how much or how far we can go. Mm -hmm. We're just also in a waiting place of saying, okay, Lord, like you got me and I know it's yep. really good, but yep. um, yeah, that's cool. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. What? You almost left your cute daughter. Oh, <laughs> she likes to mention that I almost left her, my cute daughter, an orphan. <laughs> no, you're gonna be. Fine. You doing okay? Everything good health wise with you? You know, that's also part of the patience so, yeah. part, right? Is that's then also true. being a P A T I E N T patient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, just you know, keeps doctor to doctor and um like there'll be something and i'm just trying to be grateful for the timing of it right like yeah. work is slow right now and so i have the time to slow down and take care of my health so yeah. we just keep waiting and see okay. i can't go to burkina faso right now so i may as well be That's here good. you know <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll do something cool. We're, we're going to yeah. figure out a really awesome fundraiser. And when, when yep. it kind of like uh, finds its rhythm, um, we're going to do something really awesome and get some, get some money raised. And, you know, my wife and I and the kids, we'd love to go and see it. I would love it. 
Yeah. And we work with World Vision now, and they've invited us yep. to Africa too. So there's Kenya, and so it's in the plans. Um, yep, we'll definitely be there. Awesome. All right, take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Happy November. Same to you. All right, and you got Thanks. some big stuff, right? It's World Water Day, World Toilet Day on November. World 19th. Toilet Day, November nineteenth. Nineteenth. Okay. Yep. Right. Yep. All right. You know, good. And the people appreciate their toilets. <laughs> Hug a toilet on the nineteenth. Flush the toilet. Be grateful that you got running water and a place to sit. Most people have exactly, a home, right? exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Um, Sarah is doing really, really amazing stuff, and I know a lot of you guys are getting to know each other uh, on another on. Um, okay. We've got a few more, and then uh, we're coming to the top of the hour here. I we can go. We'll go to about five fifteen, um, and then we'll wrap it up. Eileen, I'm coming to you, girl. Appreciate all of you uh, being so patient with the show today, and I'm grateful for you guys tuning in. And I love the people who watch this show after it's no longer live. Um, we're reaching about, on average, um, full views are about 5,000 plus a week. Um, but then when I go in and I look at how many people it's reaching, it's like about 12,000 people are seeing this, which is whether or not they watch the whole thing. Um, it's kind of amazing that we're just sending out a message of hope and positivity in a really crazy time. I'm going to come to Amy. Let's see, Amy, the motivational mama. Hi, Amy. Hey. How are you? Friend? How are you? Good. Nice to see you. I'm good. Good. Sorry, I'm going to my son's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> You're pixelated. There you are. Um, do you have a story that you want to share about patients? Oh, well, first of all, my mom of twins. So that just tells you right there, patients. Yeah, you already <laughs> Period. Went. You already went. Um, yeah. But um, it actually had a really aha moment at church today. It was, um, I really struggled this morning um, trying to get my business off the ground, and it's not going as fast as I want it to go. Um, so I really, really struggled with that, and I just kind of sat in church, tears in my eyes, just, what am I doing? It was one of those, what are you having me do, Lord? Like, I want to help all these people but it's not happening fast enough. And I literally sat there in the silence and immediately felt this overwhelming, like literally like anxiety type of thing. Like my heart was racing, my chest felt constricted. And I was like, okay, I need to take, I took several deep breaths. Um, that's something that I've really been working on. And when I did that and literally said, it's up to you. It's up to you, God. What am I supposed to be doing? Am I on the right path? This whisper came through. <laughs> and I get emotional talking about it now. But this whisper came through saying, I've got you. You're on the right path. It's coming. It's coming. Hang in there. Um. And it was like, as soon as that came through, I could breathe again. Uh, and it was so powerful. And it totally flipped my day. Um, I came in, you know, I came in this morning into church and I was like, oh, well, let's just get this done. I'm done. Like I just, you know, type of thing. And then I was like completely in the moment and could enjoy just being like you talked in that season, just being in that moment of peace. Yeah. And remind being reminded, I've got you. You know, hearing that I've got you, because um, sometimes I think we feel alone when we're trying to do be the mom, be the business owner, be, whatever it is. And to hear yeah. that um, was like, okay, take it, but take a step back, Amy. <laughs> you know, it was one of those things where it was kind of like. Um, I had to remind myself to take a step back and let God tell me it's okay. He's got it. Yeah. 
I love that, Amy. That's such an amazing yeah. testimony. And you gave up, you know, a lot of stability. You were a teacher for 20 years. Yep. COVID hits. And, uh, you said to yourself, you know what? I think I'm going to go and encourage people and love all people in a new way, in a different way. Yeah. So you, yeah, you took a big, bold step. And I love that you said during the peace talk where you were like, I had a spirit of peace or a sense of peace about the decision I made. There's a lot of anxiety. And now mm -hmm. you're at the other end of it, which is not, again, getting what we wanted. But, you know, as you were talking, it reminded me, you said you have twins. And we're so willing to let children grow up. But what if, what if life, what if this experience that we're sharing on the planet Earth right now is for our souls to grow in the same way that our bodies grow or that we grow as children? Like, what if we're designed to continue to mature and to continue to get strong, oh, yeah. build? And so when you were talking to me, I saw this powerful woman who is, you're going through this change. You're growing. So just as mm -hmm. your kids are growing, oh, you're growing. Yeah. And like, there's this thing that's happening in you. Oh, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, absolutely. Every, yeah. every day. And every I, day. and I find with my kids too, as Allie was talking earlier, um, like we do, we have to take that step back and not react for the sake of reacting. And I think sometimes when we do get anxious or upset or we react to react. Yeah. Um, so taking that step back and thinking, okay, yep, my kid's driving me nuts, right. <laughs> and we want to lose our patience. But we have to remember to be in that moment because they're only little for a very long period, for a very short period of time. That season. You know, season. yeah, that season. Yeah, That's huge. Awesome. Well, Amy, thank you for sharing that. You were very vulnerable with us today. I appreciate you for doing that. And for being yeah, of course. Good Glad to chat you. with you. Yeah, it's good to see you. I hope your week is a yeah. really, really wonderful one. It's going to be awesome. Good. All right. Well, we'll see you again, okay? All right. Have a good one. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Eileen, it says, it won't let me send a request. And I'm so sorry I didn't, it didn't connect because you wanted to share on the subject. If you're not on a phone, it may not allow you to talk to me. I'm going to... I'm going to request you again. So I'm requesting you right now. I mean, and, but if you're not on a phone, it won't work. Hey, there we go. There you are. How are you today? I'm okay. Thank you so much for retrying. Yeah, of course. I want to hear what you have to say. What's your, what is your take on patience? You know, um, actually you covered it, but patience to me, is um, waiting on God's best. You know, I could bring up Abraham and Joseph. Um, they, there was a developing that happened in their faith and in their walk with the Lord during that time of waiting. And my whole walk has been about waiting on God's best. Nothing has come immediately. Right. And just seeking his direction on everything, yeah. which I love. Yeah, I love that too but I'm really passionate about not running ahead of him and creating my own Ishmael's, you know what I mean? Right, trying to create our own destiny. Um, it's so interesting. You just said something and it kicked off two thoughts. What happens when, when you've been waiting uh, for decades? Like what if it's a literally matter of waiting 20 years, 25 years for something? I have. Yeah. yeah. I have. I've been waiting. Um, when I first came to the Lord, when I was a little girl, I didn't get things immediately. I don't come from a family of lavish and, oh, you, this is your heart's desire. Let me do this. Or, right. hey, right. you're so creative. Let me um, help you to pursue. Anyway, hard childhood. I come to the Lord. And as I'm reading my Bible from cover to cover, because that's how you read a book. And I didn't know, <laughs> you know, I'm just reading it from cover to cover. Awesome. When I got to the part where Paul says, um, some of you are called to be single. You know, I asked, I asked the Lord. I was uh, on an early morning walk in November, and um, I asked him, am I called to be single? Do you have a man for me? And he, he said he had a husband for me. And, um, and I've never known that. I've never known, you know, going steady or any of those things in high school because of my parents. So I'm just trusting the Lord. But as you said, 27 years later, so 
And don't be scared, Felicia. I'm not saying you're going to have to wait that long. But Felicia's like, go away. Um, yeah, it is a, it's such a touchy subject that I'm not, I, I'm not the guy to, um, to talk to, to, to be an encourager in this realm, because I think that women um, who are single longer than they want to be, because there's just so many sort of societal things that come with that, right? Um, yeah. And so you start feeling, you start feeling outside of the minute you start feeling outside, it starts to just slip. And so, but I do know um, a lot of really amazing women who are single and who are, um, there is something really beautiful about f like really living in that singleness. Um, or, you know, we have a friend who is, and she shouldn't be single. Like she's beautiful and she's funny and she's smart and she's, but it's just one of those things. But she's using her life in a way that she is truly like an angel. Like there's something about her that she's this, she's a gift. And so it's not like, it's, I don't mean it to be cold comfort because it's not, it's not the thing. Um, but I also know people that have, that have been single for a long time and then met that person. And then all of a sudden their life started in a whole other direction, just not in their timing. Um, yeah, it's hard. I mean, I, I wish I had a, a better, I wish I didn't have like, Pat answers because it really it's your life and it's something that you're you know what I mean but I appreciate you know yeah and that's only one example when you said 25 years that's the first thing I thought about but yeah. honestly Christopher it's it's everything it's um I'm I'm fine with that because I've been alone with the Lord to grow and to learn and to pray I can pray anytime yeah anytime somebody calls with a prayer request or anytime the Lord places something on my heart I can break out in song. I can, you know what I mean? So yeah. there's so many good parts about being single. And yeah. like you said, the societal is hard because all my friends are doing couple things now. Um, but that's okay. You yeah. know, it's yeah. okay. I would much rather wait on God's best in every area of my life. Yeah. Man, that's a brave thing. I appreciate you being so candid about it and talking about it. Um, that's cool. There's, there's a lot to be done in the suffering. There's a lot to um, grow and receive from the Lord in the suffering. Yeah. If anybody out there is suffering, I encourage you. Patience does a deep, deep work. A deep work. If you, if you, if you find things that are encouraging to you, would you post them on, on the Chautauqua page? Or would you, I guess how you can post them is um, like post it and tag me or tag the Palaha Chautauqua and then I can repost stuff because I'm always interested to, to post things that people send me. Or if you put it in your story and you tag me, then I can take a snapshot of it and, and dump it right on. But I do think that there is, um, I think there are a lot of things that we need to talk about as a society. And I think that singleness is really interesting because there is a, a biblical verse about it. And Paul does call some people to be single and that may not be what you want. Um, but I also think that because there's a pressure uh, for a couple dumb and for, you know, there's this almost like a, like a consumer, like we're also consumers. And so we're living in a, in, we have a worldview that's skewed to say that we're not living unless we have X, Y, Z, which isn't true, you know? And so there is something about having the full expression of the human experience, even, you know, as a single person, when you don't want to be, there is the full expression of that human experience. I had a vision one time of God living in all of us simultaneously, like literally just experiencing every single human being on the face of the earth all at once and understanding all of it entirely in that instant. And I think that there is this vast canvas of what it means to be alive and your journey is unique and special and it's, and you do have something to share and you do have something to say. So, I appreciate you coming on today and I appreciate thank you getting on and sharing it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for all these Sundays. It's been yeah. such a blessing. Thank you. Well, you know what? The world is pretty, pretty dark right now. <laughs> I figured if I can do anything to just You're a light. be, make someone smile and it's like, you know what I mean? And just be encouraging. And, and so, but you coming on and being brave and sharing your story is a part of that. So it's impossible without you. Um, you see how far I got. I was like 20 minutes in. I was like, why won't there be other people here? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much.
All right, we'll talk again. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. There you go. Um, yeah, there is no easy answer, guys. Um, I, you know, sometimes you wait a lifetime for things. And I don't know. I don't know. But I do want to encourage you all. Um, and I think the patience helps the waiting because we can find strength in it. And um, we can find endurance in it and that humility that allows us to build. So be warriors, guys. I'm going to sign off today. Thank you for bearing with me in the front half of this thing. Um, again, if you were watching this, you heard me say this last week, we talked about ghosts. And I just want to reiterate, there was a really beautiful story told about the fragrance of roses that was... Uh, an indication that her father was around and the whole family smelled roses. And Julian, when she lost her daddy, knew that he was in heaven, but really yearned uh, for some sort of sign. And when she was cleaning out her mother's kitchen and her daddy's kitchen, in the back corner underneath the kitchen counter, she found this medallion with a picture of her dad and her as an eight-year-old little girl. And she really did feel like it was God sort of saying, hey, listen, he's, he's with me, he's okay. Um, and so I think sometimes the supernatural is used to break through logical minds or um, people who, who see things very, you know, uh, rationally, and all of a sudden something unusual happens and you're kind of like, oh, well, maybe there is more to the, the world than meets the eye. So that was the, the intention of last week. This week is patience. Next week, guys, um, we're going to continue the Palaha Chautauqua, and we're going to talk about kindness this is backwards, but kindness on November 8th. So I hope that you tune in with me again, same time next Sunday, four o'clock on the West Coast, seven o'clock on the East Coast. Um, and I hope that you guys have an amazing week. Lord, I just want to lift up everybody watching the show right now. And I pray that you give them a spirit of patience this week, that you help people endure with humility and with a strength that gives them the heart of warriors. Um, I pray for peace for people who are going through long suffering and who are having to endure uh, and put off things that they hoped for and want and yearn for, um, that they will have that strength and that joy and that peace that you provide. Um, and if people who are watching this don't really know you, but they're curious, I just pray for their hearts too. And, uh, Help us be safe this week. It's an election week. Go vote. Um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.